Right, thanks. So there has already been quite a few discussions about uh, LHC in, the, uh, in this conference, so I will be reasonable, uh, uh, sort of brief on the LHC part and focus more on the, on the beyond part. Okay. But let's start just with the, a simple uh, summary of the current status of, uh, of particle physics. So we found the Higgs. We haven't seen any other new physics yet. And uh, looking into the future, the immediate future is, uh, is right now and, uh, and uh, down the road for about 20 years. And uh, it's, uh, it's called LHC run 2 to run 5, according to this table. And uh, it, you know, LHC has already started at high energy and probably, you know, it's going to run at the uh, uh, energy of about 13 TeV and it's going to get uh, tens and ultimately hundreds more data compared to what's the, the LHC data we currently have. <coughs> so, you know, because of the increase of, mainly because of the increase of the center of mass energy and also because of the uh, increase of the amount of data we are going to collect, this is a, a, a impressive uh, extension of the the reach of new physics. So, so this is just some uh, some figures. That this is, I think this is the st stop search, and this is Gluino search, and so on. This is the the limit you can set in the MSUGRA plane. But so we, we, we frequently say you know new physics. Uh, we haven't found a new physics because new physics is around the corner. If that's the case, we are going to turn a very big corner. So if uh, so if, uh, new physics could be just right there, okay. And uh, what would happen? You know, well, it could be just one of these. Okay, so if, if any of these, so these are the sort of so-called current accesses. If, if any of these is, is there, we'll, we'll, we'll immediately uh, discover them quickly. And uh, or just any, any other, anything else just around the corner, we'll see very spectacular discovery at LHC. Now, but go, going forward with the accumulation of data, you, you see that the, the, the so this is uh, some uh, estimate of how the, uh, mass reach of new physics as a function of luminosity. And so this, in this particular example, I, you, know, you, you take some new physics, for example, it's some new physics that run one has a set a limit around one, two TeV. Okay, for example, this could be a pair production of one TeV gluino. So the characteristic of these kind of new physics is that it's actually reasonably strongly coupled. And uh, the, 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 the mass reach is basically set by you running out of event. So, so the, its rate, its production rate is, is, is similar to the standard model rate at the, at the, at the same uh, kinematical regime. Okay, so, so in this kind of new uh, physics, you see that uh, what, what's going to happen is that uh, you rapidly gain, uh, there's a very rapid gain in the initial uh, several inverse femtor bar. Sorry, this, this is the new reach versus the older uh, limit at the, uh, the ratio of a new reach uh, over the 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 the, 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 the LHC run one reach. So so you see there is a rapid gain at the first several inverse femtor bar. Then there is a slow improvement afterwards. So so the news in the in this coming year will be very exciting. And after that we have to be patient basically. And for this kind of new physics. So this is basically because there is a this well known fact that because the PDF is very steeply falling. So. Yeah, that, that's the that's the reason for for this behavior, and uh, for the for the uh, if the new physics is not as strongly coupled, for example, if some kind of new physics run one can only set a limit around five hundred GeV. So this is the kind of new physics where, you know, um, the rate of standard model background is actually uh, quite a bit larger than the signal, and in this kind of scenario, the uh, uh, the luminosity actually plays a more important role. And uh, so you will, you know, in the, it's, it's actually reaching to close to its full potential only after uh, 30, 40, or maybe 50 uh, inverse femtor bar of data. Okay. So let's see, what are the, some, uh, some of those highlights? So I'll just give you some very brief examples. For example, we will be able to look for additional Higgs bosons. Okay, in the, in the, so is there, you know, is the Higgs boson we found the only neutral particle, the, the only scalar particle, or are there additional ones? Okay, so, so there will be solid gains at the RHC, and there will be potential to make new discoveries. A discovery in this category will be very interesting because it could, it could tell us maybe the, uh, the, the nature of the electrical symmetry breaking is not a simple one that we have been assuming. 
or you, it, will give, it will also give us a very new perspective on, on the world of fine tuning. If one scalar particle is already fairly, fairly tuned, two of them are, will be even more tuned. Uh, so again, this is a famous example. So if uh, we can look for top partners in SUSE, you look for stops and, uh, and the naturalness of the uh, of, of Susie is proportional to uh, m stop square. So, so this again, the, the gain is proportional to the gain of uh, uh, proportional to, to the increase of center of mass energy. So, well, I think if the a discovery of top partner will be a stunning success of, of naturalness. On the other hand, if there's no discovery, of course, we'll, we'll push further. The, the, the Susie will be even more tuned, proportional to the, to the limit of stop uh, mass square we are going to set. And uh, there's a similar story in this uh, compositeness uh, uh, story where in many models it requires the existence of a light top partner, basically correlated with the, the light Higgs mass. And, uh, and uh, so LHC8 is already getting closer to the interesting uh, top partner range in, in this simple class of uh, composite Higgs models, and uh, LHC 14 or 13 should actually cover the, the full range of it. At least uh, putting very strong limit uh, constraint on, on, the very sim on the simplest probably variants of uh, uh, minimum composite Higgs models. Okay, so just in general, I think LHC run one, as we all see from this, uh, these tables and also the summary talks earlier in this uh, conference, LHC run one has pursued a very broad program of new physics, and it will certainly continue at run two. And of course, there are you know, gaps to be filled, a new signal to be looked at. A lot of things has been discussed, such as what if we have softer particles, we have displaced vertex, and uh, you know, if, what if the, uh, um, the signal doesn't have leptons at a very at hydron, hydronic uh, rich and so on and so forth. So my general impression, so I'm sure there are more things to discuss here, but my general impression is that the experimental collaborations are fairly on top of most of these things. So, so they are, I have confidence that they will carry out a, a, a more, even more comprehensive program successfully. So, so that's my very quick summary of LHC. What, we will, uh, my, you know, what, what are our expectations for, for LHC? But let me emphasize that uh, even at the completion of LHC, there will still be many uh, open questions. Uh, a lot of those very fundamental questions of particle physics that are left unanswered, and uh, such as the nature of electroway symmetry breaking, naturalness, and dark matter. And uh, also, you know, a discovery at the LHC is unlikely to be complete. Okay, I'll, I'll elaborate on, for the rest of my talk, I will elaborate on each of this. Right. So, so, but because of this, we, we need to go beyond. We need to consider uh, the next generation of experiment beyond the LHC. Okay. So, so for that, let me first, uh, you know, talk, uh, mention that uh, there are there have been activities uh, in recent years, in particular, thinking about what's the next step beyond the LHC in high energy experiments. So there are many facilities being proposed. So there are these linear colliders, and also mo most recently there has been a lot of renewed interest in this uh, kind of a circular colliders, which is basically a scaled up version of a lab plus LHC. So it's roughly speaking it con consistent of a E plus E minus Higgs factory around the 250 GeV, uh, central mass energy. And uh, that proposal at CERN is called FCCEE. Uh, in China it's called a CEPC. Uh, circular electron positron collider. Okay, this is a future circular collider. Okay, I'm, I'm sure that's not the official name of the collider if they're get, getting built. So you know, it cannot be future, but anyway. So, uh, so and uh, and there's also the later on it will be followed by a PP version, roughly ar around 100 TeV. At the CERN is called FCCHH, and in China it's called SPPC, okay. super proton proton collider. Okay. okay. So uh, for the rest of my talk, and uh, I'm going to focus more on, the, on, the, on these later options. Although, you know, you see the sum of the lessons, especially the Higgs factory phase, can uh, directly be extrapolated to the, to the ILC, for example. Okay. So since I'm more uh, involved in the, 
in the, in the Chinese side of the effort. Let me just give you also a very brief uh, update of the status, what's going on in China. And uh, so we are, there is a preliminary conceptual design report, very preliminary, and that has been finished. And it contains two parts. One, one part is, a, well, basically three, sorry, three parts. The one part is about the accelerator design. And then there is a, a volume discuss the physics case. And also there is a, a lot of discussion in, the, in, the, in some preliminary detector design. The, it focuses on, mainly on the, on the Higgs uh, factory. And if you want to look at it, here is, here is how you find it. And, uh, and they are proposing for R&D funding at this moment. So the proposal has been submitted. And <clears throat> the aim is the, to, to the, 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 they're aiming at being, getting into being part of this so-called 13th five-year plan. So for those of you not coming from a communist country, so the, this, is a, this is their main, main funding instrument in communist countries, started by, by Soviet Union, I believe. So, uh, and they're also exploring other sources, but this is their main thrust. And I think, well, most optimistically, it's very hard to tell right now, it's very preliminary, but the, the most op optimistically, we probably will be able to see EE collision at the early uh, 2030s. Okay. okay, so let's talk about uh, the, the capability of these future colliders. Um, so at the E plus E minus fact, uh, Higgs factory, the main gist, gist is that it actually is a very clean environment and it's very, very good for precision measurement. Okay, you measure very small uh, deviations from the standard model predictions, which can be parameterized roughly in this form, which is the, the V square over the mass scale of new physics square. And uh, for example, if, if we can look at the Higgs coupling, so LHC ultimately will push a lot of those coupling into the range of five to 10%. And uh, this means that this roughly translated into a uh, LHC through this kind of measurement will be sensitive to a new physics scale around the TEV. Okay, at the same time, obviously LHC can direct search these, uh, these new physics as well. Okay. On the other hand, in order to go beyond the LHC, so ba based, based on this kind of argument, we really need to push the, a lot of those precisions down to 1% or less, basically. So now you're actually going above TEV and going also above the, the reach of LHC direct search. And uh, so for example, this is uh, what uh, uh, the, the Chinese proposal, so the, the, the CEPC can do. Uh, so there are some, you know, uh, for example, the a flagship measurement is the Higgs Z coupling this through the, the, the so-called recoil mass measurement, model independent measurement of the Higgs coupling to Z, and, and, uh, and this can be done very well to the sub-percent level. And, uh, and the many other coupling down to a percent level, so the gray bars are the percentage ever accuracy from high luminosity LHC, by the way. So this, this is a log scale too. And uh, there is also a model independent determination of the Higgs width, and so on and so forth. And all these things are, at the lepton collider, the, the precision is systematically dominated. So, so, so the European version, FCCEE, is aiming at a roughly uh, twice higher luminosity. So you, we can just take a square root two of a, both. M m basically, we can just take a square root of two, root two for, of these error bars. And uh, also, uh, remember that the, the, the one important stage of any E plus C minus collider is that it can also run on the Z pole. This is a lap one uh, phase, for example. And uh, it will produce a lot of Zs and, uh, and uh, do precision measurement. Okay? So uh, going from uh, uh, lap to, to the new generation of, uh, of, uh, of Higgs factories, both uh, FCCEE and the CEPC, we, you gain roughly a, a roughly a factor of 10 in terms of S and T measurement. Okay, so historically, this is a very successful uh, venue for, for, for learning uh, physics. So lab one plus LSD taught us a lot, okay, so about the uh, standard model physics. I think we will learn, well, if, if this uh, goes forward, we will also learn uh, a lot more from this kind of precision measurement. I'll have a few examples later. Okay. Now at the 100 TeV PP collider, and obviously, the, the increase of uh, the most, uh, uh, the biggest increase is just coming from the increase of central mass energy. And so these are some, just some production rates of some new physics. So the lower curves are 
uh, uh, LHC 14, and uh, the upper curves are uh, and, uh, 100 TeV collider. Just from this production rate, you see that there is a huge increase uh, in, in physics reach, and which is, uh, can be demonstrated. Sorry about missing this figure. So it's demonstrated in many of these cases. So, so this is a SUSE search. This is just a simple Z prime search. And this is some uh, hydronic resonance search. So, so basically, you, 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 you increase the mass reach roughly proportional to the, to the increase of center of mass energy. Okay. So. Now, earlier I began my, my talk about uh, uh, mentioning this uh, uh, list of questions that LHC cannot really address very well. So let, let's see. The, so so I, now I briefly summarize the, the capabilities of the new generation of colliders. Let's see how those things can translate into answers to can help us answer those questions. So let me begin with uh, the nature of electroweak symmetry breaking. Okay, so this, so we, we, we often have the impression that uh, this is very simple. So this is the max second hat potential. This is something that, uh, you know, H squared hat plus H to the fourth. It's very similar and motivated by the, the Landau Ginzburg theory of superconductivity. And, uh, you know, Higgs goes down, has a, gets, gets a VEV, and so on and so forth. However, I think this simplicity is very misleading because, first of all, just even, even, even very simple, uh, and uh, these numbers, uh, we, we sort of have an idea what they are within this, simple, uh, uh, within this simple model. On the other hand, they are not predicted by any theory. We don't, we don't know how they got their values. So, so, so this cannot be the complete picture, so just at a very uh, basic level. But moreover, okay, we actually know very little about the Higgs, okay? So, so this, we think we know it's a maximum hat, but we actually don't. This is what we really know. We know that it's, from, it's, go, get, it's away from the origin, and we know a little bit about the, the potential around it. Okay, this is what we know. In particular, I can have these two very different looking potential. Okay, this is the maximum hat, this is not. Okay, this is some other hat. And, uh, you know, but they also, they all give you the same answer that we, what we, what we know now, okay? And uh, very interestingly, so, so for example, the difference between these two can get into a very important question. For example, is the electric phase transition uh, first order or not? Okay. So this is a, a difference that LHC cannot distinguish, okay? Just this very elementary question, uh, you know, without any, you know, we want to know the full shape, full Higgs potential, and the LHC is unlikely to tell us the answer. Right. So, now just, okay, I should be standing closer. So just in case I, you think I'm just uh, you know, making up these potentials, it will be very crazy to have these potentials. It's not. These kind of potential actually can happen you know, in a very, very simple series. So, so it's like, for example, like if I just write, uh, they just add a singlet to the, to the standard model and write the, this kind of general couplings. You're, you can already see that, the, you know, the, for example, this kind of interactions will generate that, uh, that H to the six terms, okay? And, and it leads to the shift of the, of the triple Higgs coupling. So, so a, a generic estimate you can make based on this very simple uh, potential tells you that uh, if I am in, uh, sorry, if I'm in this uh, green potential, okay, namely the, the, the one that uh, uh, have the first order phase transition, it gener generically leads to the conclusion that it will shift, the Higgs and the Z coupling will be shifted from standard, from standard model prediction to at least 0.5%. Uh, and uh, there's, it generally leads to a order one shift in the, in the triple Higgs coupling. And uh, of course, so, so let, let's remind, remind ourselves, this is the, 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 the precision that you, we can get from the Higgs-Z coupling and the, and the sub percent, and, well, 0.1 something percent. And uh, then the, this is the uh, accuracy we can measure Higgs triple coupling at, the, at 100 TeV uh, PP collider, okay? So, so you see that the, both of these are within the reach of the uh, next generation colliders. So, so the bottom line is just uh, you know the next generation collider combining these two measurements can already give us a lot of knowledge to distinguish this red versus this green. 
And we can even talk about you know, directly looking for the singlet at the at 100 TeV PP collider, and the, the, the production rate is actually fairly decent. We can push the, we can probe the, uh, the singlet uh, close to a TeV in mass. Okay. So, so again, the, 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 this is the bottom line. Uh, the combination of Higgs factory and the 100 TeV PP collider can actually go very long way to understand the nature of electroweak symmetry breaking. Okay, now let's come to uh, naturalness. And uh, so the first point is very obvious. So again, the PP 100 TeV uh, PP collider can uh, push uh, much further uh, our limit on, on naturalness. So the, 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 again, this is the stop story and the tuning proportional to the stop square. And it's therefore uh, at the 100 TeV PP collider will, will, will gain roughly two order magnitude in terms of uh, uh, con constraining the fine tuning. And moreover, if the, you know, the standard um, the MSSM is a, a little bit tuned, but uh, uh, then it's, so the top partner is a little bit heavy, such as a 6 TV, it can actually be discovered by the, uh, by the 100 TV PP collider. And uh, there is also a you know, composite Higgs model. So let's consider composite Higgs model. First of all, you, we can composite Higgs model predict a lot of these deviations. For example, the, the deviation from the Higgs Z and the Higgs W coupling on the order of V square of F square F is the sort of the character, characteristic scale uh, uh, in the composite Higgs model. And it also predict a, a, a uh, give a prediction of the, of the deviation in the S parameter, for example. So the precision measurement at the Higgs factory, both on the Higgs coupling and S parameter can give you very good probes of this, uh, this scale already, okay, even before the, the running of the PP collider. Okay, so notice this is getting into you know, very high scales uh, in, in, in this parameter F, where you know, for the natural composite Higgs models, people usually talk about some scale from uh, 600 GeV to maybe a little bit more than T. Okay. We can, of course, direct search the, uh, uh, the composite resonances. You know, uh, so composite theory will have a, uh, a lot of uh, resonance, just like QCD have a lot of resonance. So, so this is the reach of at RGC, and, uh, and this is the reach of uh, uh, an SPP, sorry, no, 100 TeV PP collider. So they're, they're plotting for F, FCC. And uh, so they may not look too different until you notice that the, 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 this is the, the, the scaling of the axis this is different. Okay, so this is, okay, so, so this is going much further. Okay, but again, that's not surprising. This is just basically scale with, with central mass energy. Okay, so the, this, this com combination of Higgs uh, factory and the, and the uh, high energy PP collider, again, give you very strong uh, probe in, in, in this composite Higgs scenario. Now, uh, just, even, even at this moment, we haven't seen any top partners. This is already motivated by a lot of us to make a com top partner completely hidden. Okay, so this is the, the talk Gustavo gave uh, yesterday. And the, one of those scenarios is called Twin Higgs. So I think, you know, uh, so, so the, the, in this case, the top partner is neutral. It only couples to Higgs. And LHC reach is very poor. This is, you know, if you want, this serves as an as a example of we could actually see nothing but the, the, at the LHC, but the, the, the theory is still completely natural at the, at the LHC. On the other hand, these kind of uh, uh, um, the irreducible, there's an irreducible contribution from this kind of new physics to the Higgs coupling to the Z. And that actually can be tested at the, at the uh, Higgs factory pretty well. So, so this actually, Higgs factory can probe this model in, in a, in a, in a non-trivial way, just by measuring the coupling, the deviation in the coupling between, the, uh, uh, between Higgs and Z. And uh, I think Gustavo also talked about the uh, folded Susie, and uh, that also, uh, the top partner is not, does not have color. Oh, sorry. And, uh, and uh, this actually, uh, in this case, actually, is the electroweak precision measurement give 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 the strongest constraint that can can limit can set a limit on this kind of top partner top partner to roughly around the TeV scale. Okay, so the last topic I'm going to or the main physics question I'm going to talk about is dark matter, and I'm going to focus on this very very. So there are many many ways of looking for dark matter. Dark matter could also come with spectacular signals at the colliders, but Let's just focus on this very basic channel, which also was also mentioned yesterday. 
and it's already been pursued at RHC, which is the Mono X channel, such as Mono Jet and so on. Moreover, I'm going to focus on Mono Jet since that is usually giving you the, the strongest uh, limit. And uh, we can, so for example, this is the Mono Jet reach on the, uh, on the Suzy Wino like dark matter or in the Suzy Hexino like dark matter. So, so to, to just guide your eyes, so, so th sorry, this is, this is the, the, the ultimate reach of LHC, uh, high luminosity LHC, and uh, this is the reach at 100 TV PP collider. So just to guide your eyes, what is the mass we're talking about? If you, so so the, to get the correct thermal relic abundance, the mass of WIMP should be really in the TEV range, okay? So, so roughly around the TEV range. So LHC limit on this is very limited. LHC reach of monojet is very reach, limited because it's, 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 it is a very difficult channel. And, uh, and, and the, the 100 TV collider does get you into a lot of this interesting parameter region. And in, moreover, there is this interesting uh, 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 channel called disappearing tracks, for, for in, in particular for the Wino dark matter. And basically, it's looking for a charge that we know produced that then decay, going through several layers of track card and then, then decay. Okay, so this is, this is actually, for the we know case, it's setting a fairly interesting limit at the LHC already, which is a 250 GeV. And this to be compared with the monojet limit at LHC at this moment, which is zero. Okay, so, and, uh, so this is very impressive. And uh, a naive scaling of, uh, of, uh, of those uh, limit is, you, you can show that the, at a 100 TeV collider, you can almost co completely cover the Wino parameter space. Okay, so this, again, this is a, a summary of the monojet reach of dark matter. So this, the, the blue ones are the LHC reach, the red ones are the 100 TeV collider reach. You see that, the, remember again, we wanted a WIMP in the, in the TeV range, is, is the 100 TeV collider really get us into that, that range, the interesting parameter range. And uh, if we are uh, considering slightly more uh, elaborate models where you actually can produce uh, a, the, the heavier uh, <coughs> uh, uh, electroweak charged particles and then, then they decay down to dark matter, you, we can even enhance the uh, reach significantly. Okay, so let me just, okay, so the, okay, good. So uh, the last thing I wanted to address is the, the LHC dis discovery scenario. So if we made a discovery at LHC run two or run two, uh, run three, run four, okay. So if we if we do that, is it possible that we can discover everything uh, at LHC? Okay. So I think that would be great. However, I think it's highly unlikely. So because uh, just because uh, we haven't seen anything yet, and if we really think about any of these uh, uh, you know, big new physics scenarios, there is uh, usually a, a at least the order ones. Uh, spread of the spectrum. Just combine these two facts, it's unlikely we will discover everything you know, in, the, in the new file uh, for, for anything. So just because we haven't seen anything yet. Okay, therefore, in this case, I think LHC discovery itself is not complete and it will set a, a stage for a few future uh, PP colliders. So it's just to give you a simple example, this is a random SUSY model for no reason. Okay, this is just a, uh, I, if I, pick random numbers in the spectrum, this is what it looks like. Just for this particular model, for example, this is the current limit, okay? And LHC uh, will discover gluinos, squark, and so on, some of, some of the chaginos, but it will not uh, discover the rest of it. So this is, the, again, an example of an incomplete dis discovery. And moreover, even for the gluino, LHC will only produce a, a little bit of them, and, uh, and going to 100 TeV, Collider, you will produce uh, more than three order magnitude more gluinos. This, you know, really give you a uh, opportunity to, to do uh, study gluino properties in detail, the precision measurement, okay, of the gluino. Uh, so, uh, the, and the, the composite Higgs model is the same story. Usually, we're talking about the order TeV split in the spectrum. So, it's unlikely we'll discover the whole thing. Okay, so I'll conclude and. Uh, so LHC uh, run two and, uh, and go further will actually pr further probe new physics. There are interesting gains in reach. On the other hand, I think uh, even at the end of LHC, there will be several very uh, important fundamental questions in particle physics that cannot be answered fully by the LHC result, such as the electric symmetry breaking, naturalness, dark matter, and, and there, are, there, are, there are many more. Okay. 
So going beyond the LHC, I think there have been many activities recently in the community, particularly in the last couple of years, motivated, uh, stimulated by the discovery of the Higgs. And uh, there has been, you know, as, as, as we have seen, it, the, the physics case is great, and uh, there are many efforts underway to make it happen. So, okay, sorry. Thank you. We have time for questions. So uh, in the search for dark matter at colliders, there are two things that count. One is the mass, as you see. The other thing is uh, the coupling. So the LHC, uh, OK, in terms of mass, is correct what you say. But in terms of coupling with the high luminosity, it could go quite down in the, you know, in the in the smallness of couplings that he can measure. So uh, what about uh, the colliders? I mean, the well, large... Well, you know, a 100 TV collider can only improve on that, right? You, you, right. You, for for, the, for any um, given mass and coupling, you'll produce more of them at the... At the right, so so so, to, so, the, so far, the, the, so the candidate I, I, I have uh, studied here are, have very standard couplings. So they, they, are, they are just uh, SU2 gauge couplings because these are Wino and Hexinos. So, so they yeah. So, yes. So if you want to talk about smaller couplings and so on, I think going to higher energy, you can only gain a lot. You know, and, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. More questions? Well, if not, then let's thank the speaker again. Right, thank you.